We've drawn a picture that shows a tennis player initially throwing a tennis ball straight up into the air with some initial velocity that we do not know currently. The ball goes up, it stops, turns back around, and returns to the same level from which it was thrown. It is very important to note that when the ball returns to the same level from which it is thrown, the velocity has the same magnitude, but it has a different direction. In other words, right now, when the ball returns, the velocity is downward rather than upward. So if we were to label this velocity, we could label it as negative V initial. So again, it's important to understand the symmetry of this motion, that if it's thrown upward with a certain amount of velocity, then when it returns to the same level, it will have that same magnitude of velocity, but in the opposite direction. So we just have to label it negative V initial. So those ideas will become important, but let's look at part A. It asks us for the acceleration of the ball while it is in flight. Well, of course, once the tennis player releases the ball, the only force acting on that tennis ball is the gravitational force, and we all know that the gravitational force exerts an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that would be the correct answer for part A. In part B, it asks for the velocity of the ball when it reaches the maximum height. Now in my little picture here, the maximum height of the tennis ball would be somewhere up here. And at that moment, at that maximum height, that velocity up there would be zero meters per second for just a split moment. And so that would be the correct answer for part B. So A and B are more conceptual type of questions, but part C, we're gonna make a calculation. We need to calculate the initial velocity of the ball. Now let's write down the things that we know once again. So we know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know the time that it took for the ball to go up and then back down was stated as two seconds. Now, for the initial velocity, we don't know the value, but we've marked it as V-naught. So we're just gonna say the initial velocity is V-naught. For the final velocity, if we look back at our picture and consider our earlier discussion, that final velocity will be negative V-naught. So with those values, it turns out we're going to be able to use this first equation from kinematics to help us solve this. So let's write that down again. We have V final is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Now, the final velocity again was negative V naught. The initial velocity was V naught. The acceleration, negative 9.8. We'll omit the units now for clarity and then multiplied by the time of two seconds. What we will do is subtract the V naught from both sides of the equation. So the left side would become negative two V naught. And the right side, if we multiply the negative 9.8 by two, we would get negative 19.6. And then finally, to solve for the initial velocity, we would just divide both sides of the equation by negative two. And when we do that, we can see the initial velocity is 9.8, and this will be meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part C of the question. We move back up and look at part D, which wants the maximum height that the ball reaches. So now we're going to write down some values that we would know in order to solve this part of the question. We, of course, now know that the initial velocity is positive 9.8 meters per second. The acceleration is the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice this, that the final velocity in this case would be zero because what we're doing is we're saying, here's the initial point where the ball was thrown and then the ball travels up to its maximum height, that would be the final. And we can see from our earlier discussion that that final velocity would be zero meters per second. And then we're looking for the maximum height. So essentially what we're looking for is this change in vertical displacement. We're looking for delta y. So we just have to pick the corresponding equation from the list here. We might as well go ahead and use this equation right here. The only change we'll make instead of delta x, we'll use delta y because our motion is in the vertical dimension. So we'll write that equation down. We have final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two acceleration and then vertical displacement. We might wanna solve this for the vertical displacement and then we can plug in the known values. So we'll subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides of the equation. This will give us v squared minus v naught squared equals two a delta y 
And then finally, to solve for delta y, we'll divide both sides by 2a. So then we can see that this final expression here will give us that vertical displacement. So that would give us the maximum height of the tennis ball. We'll plug in the known values. The final velocity was zero. We'll square it for good measure. Minus the initial of 9.8, don't forget to square it, divided by two times negative 9.8. Let's pick up our calculators and punch this in, and this will give us the correct answer to the question. When you do that, you get 4.9. So 4.9, now we calculated a vertical displacement so the unit would work out to be in meters, so this would be the correct answer for the maximum height of the ball.